Hi, Verl Workman here with Workman Success Systems, and welcome to Workman's Wisdom. Today we're talking about listings. Matter of fact, this whole month, our focus has been becoming a listing master or a listing superstar. And today I want to review a little bit about what we've covered this month. First of all, we talked about the importance of why we list. I helped you understand that for every listing you get, you should generate 1.5 buy side closings. That's two and a half transactions for every listing. As a team leader, or the CEO of your business, or an agent that works both buyers and sellers, if you realize if you put your efforts and energy and attention into listing more, the rest of your business will fall into place. Second, we talked about preparing in advance, building a pre-listing package, getting ready, setting the stage, creating the opening ceremonies for the ultimate listing presentation happens before you actually get there. It's doing your research on the client, understanding who they are, uh, connecting with them on social media sites and so forth. Doing your research on the property, the neighborhood, so you show up engaged and informed. And then when you get to the presentation, you follow the process we talked about next, which was building relationships of trust and understanding how to recognize people's disk profile and adjust your presentation to be able to match theirs. Well, today, I'm going to talk about actually getting the listing signed. I'm going to talk about the process that the elite go through when they actually do a listing presentation. Now, I've been very fortunate in my career to have had the opportunity to list a lot of houses, but even more important than that, I've had even greater opportunities to rub shoulders with, to review, and to go on literally dozens, if not hundreds of listing appointments with the elite agents in the country. I watch how they do, I watch how they build their relationship, and I watch the process that they follow. What I'm going to share with you next is what I've put together after learning as much as I can from people who do it way better than me on how to be the ultimate listing agent. It starts with what I call is the critical path to listing more homes. Now, I call it the critical path, but it can easily be called the ultimate path, the only path, the absolutely you must do it this way path. The critical path follows some very key process points, and let me take you through each one of those. The first one is, before you ever meet with a client, you've got to do your research. You have to become a neighborhood community and a home selling expert. You can't fake expertise. One of the things that the elite have is they have sold so many homes that they know the neighborhoods, the market. They understand. Oftentimes, they've been through the house that they're getting ready to list when it was previously sold. And so you as a new agent or as an agent that doesn't have that kind of experience, you have to do the necessary things to really understand the market. Set yourself on auto hot sheets. Go on the board tours, the office tours, view property. Become a true expert. You have to do your research. Also research the client, know who they are, and once you've gone through this research page, you started doing your prospecting, you then get the appointment. Once the appointment happens, that's when you put your plan into place. You launch the pre-listing package, you do your social media research on the client and that exact home, you get all of your ducks in a row so that you're ready for the next phase. You've heard it said that people, you can't make a... um, You only have a few seconds to make a good first impression. Well, that's absolutely true. From the time you pull up in front of that house to the time you get to the door, I promise you're being watched. Your body language, your energy, the way that you dress, everything is being analyzed by the client. The way that you approach them and greet them at the door oftentimes will determine whether or not the rest of the presentation goes well. So I'm going to encourage you to get yourself fired up. One of the listing guys I went on with is a great listing agent, listing over 400 houses a year. He would listen to motivational sales tapes on his way to the listing appointment or CDs or on the iPod. And he would show up and he would have this sales mindset going because he just got done listening to Zig Ziglar or Tom Hopkins or some of the great sales trainers. So when he shows up, he's got this different physiology, this energy about him that says, I'm a freaking sales animal. So pull up in front of the house and be ready. When you pull up, don't sit there, go through your phone, check a few emails, post on Facebook. You know, you're you're being watched. So the approach and greeting is critical. Next, when you walk to the home, you need to create, I'm going to call it a success swagger. You need to walk with confidence. When you walk up to the home, I like to walk up to the home and I like to look at the house. I like to look around the sides like I'm really interested in the home because I am. I want to know, hey, what's this going to look like when I put it on my marketing? How's it going to look online? 
When I get to the home, I've walked with a level of confidence so that when they open the door, I can greet them with enthusiasm. The way you greet someone, the eye contact that you have, the way that you put out your hand and say, hi, I'm Verl, great to meet you. Make eye contact with them and give them a firm handshake. That approach and greeting, that level of confidence, what you've done from the time in your car sets the stage for the ultimate listing presentation. You want to be great at this game? Then break down and analyze every prospect or every aspect of the process. And as you break down and analyze every aspect of the process, you'll realize that we all have areas of room where we can improve. So we've done our research. Now we have a great approach and greeting. We greet them with enthusiasm, great eye contact, a good firm handshake. And then we ask them, how we can serve them. Not how can I help you or what can I do for you, but I want to know how I can serve you. That's really important. The next part is where we take them through a needs probe. The needs probe is where we find out all of the important things. Now, in the pre-appointment process, our assistant may have already called them and asked them why they're selling and what they think their house is worth. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to first talk to them about, uh, about what, you know, where, where they're going or what their next move is or what that looks like or why they're actually selling. Now, I'm going to ask them to take me through and show me their home. What do they love about their home? What are the memories that they have there? What are the things that attracted them to the home first when they first bought the house? And then I'm going to get all of that information and I'm going to take copious notes on my iPad as I go through the home. So I walk the home. I, 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 I ask lots of questions. I also walk the home with a critical eye and I ask the seller if it's okay if I do that. I'll say to the seller, would it be all right with you is as we walk through the home, you give me all the highlights, but I also look at things that a potential buyer's agent might point out to their buyer that could be used as a price lever. Now, you notice I asked for permission. Sales is a process. Would it be all right with you if I looked at your home with a critical eye as well so that a potential buyer's agent won't be able to use these things as price levers in the negotiation process? I found that oftentimes a couple hundred dollars in fix-up can save thousands of dollars at the closing table. I identify issues and I walk through as if I'm the buyer. This is all part of this needs probe. I've made a great list, I've done a great needs probe, I understand why they're moving, what their motivation is, I know what we have to do to get the house ready to be sold. This is where you go into your presentation. Now, I gotta tell you, this is where most agents fail. They don't take the time to do their research. They don't have a great approach and greeting, and they don't go through and do a real in-depth needs probe. They want to get right into the presentation before they actually understand the needs of the client. This is what separates the elite from the average, is they then customize their presentation based on what they found out during the needs analysis of that client. So my presentation revolves around the client and their needs. Oftentimes I'm going to begin. Now I want you to think about this. You've sent them a pre-listing package, so they're already sold on you. You've taken time to build your relationship, because we'll talk about that in just a second. You've presented to them in a way that allows them to be comfortable with who they are, understanding the disc profiles. And now it's time to say, now you got the pre-list package. Did you get a chance to do the homework? I always ask that. If they've done their homework, then I move quickly into, do you have any questions? Almost always, the questions are around these two things. How much do you think we can get for our house? How much am I going to have to pay you? And how long is it going to take to sell it? When you already know that these are their key questions, it's okay to allow them to ask them. So what are the most important questions? What are the, what are the thorn in your shoe? What are the things that are weighing most heavily on you as we talk about the listing process? And they're going to say, well, just, you know, I want to know how much I can get out of my house. The question is actually loaded. What they want to know is the net. How much will I be able to net when my house sells? Once you answer those questions, you then take them through your solution. So I take them through my solution. Oftentimes, before I get into the commission, I'll say, you know, the commission's irrelevant. It's the same to everybody. Let me tell you what we do for you, and then I'll do a net sheet with you and show you what that means on your bottom line. And so now, based on their needs, I'm going to open up my listing presentation, and you can do it virtually. You can do it with an iPad, or you can do it uh, with paper. It doesn't matter to me. I, we can close either way. I go through, and I hit the things that are important to them. I make sure I focus on the differentiators, what we do that's different, whether it's the way we market it online, the video that we use, the way that we do a video walkthrough is huge, the way that we use listing syndication to make sure that anywhere somebody searches online, that house shows up. We blow them away with the services we provide so that when we get to commission, it's not an issue. 
Then we talk about our standard pricing strategy, how we price the property. I give them their price options based on how long they want their home to be on the market. The higher the price, the longer it'll be on the market. So here's where the comps are. If you want to price your home above the comps, then we have to lengthen the term of the listing agreement. If you want it to sell quickly, then we reduce the price so it sells faster. There's a great video in the BAM series by our agent Mastery about how to price homes effectively using one of uh, my favorite agents, Sam Miller's clock pricing strategy. And I encourage you to go through BAM and learn how to do that in more detail. So we go through the program, we talk about our solution, ask them if they have any questions. When they give you the buying, here's the buying signals. Nope, no more questions. I don't think I have any more questions. This is when it's really important that you understand this key phrase. Are you ready for it? Shut up and close. Stop talking. If the client's ready to go, they're ready to list, but you haven't gone through your whole presentation yet, it's okay to just shut up and close. Stop talking. What I want you to do is say, okay, so if you don't have any more questions, let's get it on the market. And then I'm going to open up my digital document uh, on my iPad. I'm going to have them press hard and make sure that we sign it and send them electronic copies. I'm going to go into a trial close. A trial close is our questions that validate that they're ready to move forward. And I'll say something like this. Here's a good trial close question. Now, I made a list of 15 things that need to be done before we actually put your house on the market. I like to put houses on the market on Thursday night or Friday morning so that we get the weekend agents that are looking for properties. Are you able to get those done things done by Thursday? If the client says yes, then I'll say, great, here's your list. And then I'll put the list date as Thursday. So the trial close question isn't, are you willing to pay me commission and move forward? The trial question is, can you get those 11 things done and have them ready before we have the photographer come out and shoot the home? And then I schedule the photographer. Do you see how we're using a trial close? I never ever say to a client, are you ready to list your house with me and pay me the commission? Those words never come out of my mouth. What I, what I say is, are you ready to move forward? Yes, I am okay. Let me get your okay on that. Then I do the paperwork, they sign it, and I stop. If for some reason they say no or they give me an objection, I move to the next phase. Well, you know, another agent said they could do it for less. That's an objection. The objection is another agent said they could do it for less, but what's the real concern? Great salespeople have the ability to ask more questions to find out what the real concern is and apply great scripts and dialogues to overcome the price objection. Something like this, there's three things everybody wants when they make a major buying decision. We're all looking for the best price, the highest quality product, and the best service. Would it be fair that you're going to make your decision on who to list with based on the quality agent, the services they provide, and the, and the fee they charge you? The client's going to say, well, well, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. And then I'll say, great, name one product that you're familiar with that has all three. Highest quality, best thing you can buy, best service out there, and cheapest thing. And then I just stop and listen to their response. You see, if you have great dialogue and you practice your scripts and dialogues, you're able to resolve any concern. There's also another video in BAM that I encourage you to go through where we talk about overcoming objections and resolving concerns, Verl style. And you're welcome to go through that video. Once you've resolved concerns, if for some reason you don't close, which is pretty rare, it's okay. Maybe you're dealing with a high C personality type and they really want to think about it, pray about it, sleep on it, and that's okay. Some people really do need to know that and we give them that space. Then you need to go into the last phase, which is follow up. You must have a follow up system. The follow up system should be the same whether they list that night or not. They should get a thank you card, a follow up call, a call from the team, a next scheduled appointment, and the next steps being clearly outlined. If they're not ready to go right now, they're maybe ready to go in 30 days or 60 days. I'll post date the listing agreement and have them post date it for the time they're ready to go so that we can just move forward and not have to get back together. I use every tool in my arsenal, every arrow in my quiver to move this client from thinking about listing to actually putting it on the market. I follow up with them until they list or tell me to die. I want to follow up with them until they follow, file a restraining order. I'm going to follow up with them every two weeks, every 30 days, depending on whether they're a B or a C lead, until they actually list. This whole process only works if you understand the most important, or I'm going to say the most critical part of the entire sales process, and that is the center. You can only ask the hard questions. You can only take people through overcoming objections and resolving concerns if you've taken the time to build your relationship of trust. Building that relationship of trust is at the center of the critical path. If you do this, you'll be able to effectively list the majority of the presentations you go on. So... February is listing month. I hope you've learned a lot. I hope you apply the principles that we've talked about this month into becoming an ultimate listing agent.
Thanks for staying tuned.